Zatanna, Bring Down the House, Issue 5, Mariko Tamaki writing with Javier Rodriguez on the R. So, final issue of this book, uh, Zatanna and the Stranger go to confront whatever Zatara has done and deal with the magic, which seems to be like a bit of a timey-wimey thing, where yep. like Zatanna becomes a kid version of herself again, and it seems to like like interact with that night when her dad went away, almost yep. as if adult Zatanna was there to actually do that at the mm-hmm. time, to kind of like close the circle, as it were. Uh, that said, though, I do think this is my least favorite issue of this book. Yeah, a lot of stuff happens, and it's a lot of... It almost felt like we could have had an extra issue. Because I still don't fully buy Zatara as the main bad guy. It doesn't feel like it was set up like that. I, I, yeah, I thought there was going to be more <laughs> of an understanding of why he was yes. doing what he was doing, and more of a, like a, maybe even like a redemptive element of like, he was doing yes. it for a good reason or something like that. And yeah, I yeah. kind of felt like on this mission, I didn't really feel like I found anything out. I felt mm-hmm. like the Zatanna and the Stranger just went to deal with it. The, there was a lot of nice art of like, yeah. uh, like her yeah. using yeah. some powers and stuff, but yeah. there wasn't really any sort of like new story development. You know, because I, I was going to say like a, a new twist. I don't mean a twist yeah. in the sense of a, like a, a twist. I just mean no. a, a story development where it felt like we got a new layer to what was happening. Or does like, Zatanna learn something? You- in the confrontation with her father. Yeah. Instead, it was just a lot of nice art, a lot of fighting and, like, magic blasts. Mm-hmm. And then, you know, that was kind of it. Honestly, I, I felt like it was pretty fluffy by the end. I didn't really feel like I got, like, that much of a story out of this, other than just, she goes, he says some things, he's kind of angry, and she wins by blasting it's... him with magic, effectively. Yeah, I've noticed there's a theme in Tamaki's art where it's somebody standing up to a, a figure that they have felt, you know, has been in their way. Um, and here it's Zatanna against the kind of the idea of her father. And right. And so I still I still don't fully understand why he would strip her magic because he never felt like this power hungry. Like even in those opening pages of the first book, it just felt like she had messed up with those kids. And it didn't even feel like it was a father going like, oh, she can't handle this power. I'm going to take it away until one day that she can. Right. It just felt she was like, oh, she has the strong magic. It's mine now. Um, And so it's nice that she finds that confidence to stand up to this idea of her dad and get her magic back. And she is a natural. But yeah, it's not as clear as it could be. Yeah, he he says, you know, can't you see what I've become? I brought you here to finally take away your darkness away from the world for good to save you again from your power. And I will do exactly that. Uh, repeat after me and I, I like you know I, I think that what we're going for here is the idea that he is scared of what his daughter's potential is and it's an allegory for mm-hmm. when a parent doesn't like what their, their kid's becoming you could read that mm-hmm. as an allegory for being gay you could read that as an allegory uh-huh. for being I don't know different politically or whatever mm-hmm. and this idea of of like them thinking they're doing something right by taking that away from you when in actual fact it's removing your choice and your power uh, mm-hmm. and robbing you of something that you're supposed to have. I think that's what it's going for, but I really needed yeah. a bigger confrontation with Zatara to really get those yeah. ideas across. I, I felt a little underwhelmed by this, honestly. Yeah, I, I do too. And, you know, that's it. I love all the art. I like the vibrant color. I like the, you know, the big statue of Zatara upside down. There's like a desert uh above it and there's his mouth coming in from the angle it's all again very disorienting um and just the way that he's drawn on the next page of there's like not a straight angle to him he's kind of looks almost like he's made up of shadows himself where he's like can't you see what i've become um and, and i like all that i just wish the story was matching you know some of the art yeah i just yeah, because when it got to like the big page where she says something that's not even backwards, it's it's mm-hmm. kind of like phased out so we can't see it, yeah. and it's kind of like she's going beyond regular magic, and it's yeah. all the bright colors coming from her hand, um, which you know maybe adds to the whole uh, mm-hmm. the, the allegory for like you know a parent trying to like suppress someone who's gay uh, yeah. because the colors mm-hmm. are very pride flag uh, uh, yeah. adjacent. Um, maybe that's what it's going for, and I, I you know I, I get that. But when it went to the next page and we're like in the aftermath and she's got a new magic show and she's like, ch- you know, chatting to the bunny girl again, mm-hmm. I genuinely had a feeling of, wait, is that it? <laughs> like, I thought there was going to be more of a, 
a revelation. Yeah. I thought there was going to be more of a like a realization of of why he'd done it or like what she has to specifically overcome. Mm-hmm. I just I kind of felt a little bit like I, I don't even I'm not even really sure how she got powerful enough to beat him. Like I I don't even know if I got kind of that that beat in the story. I just kind of feel like all of a sudden she could. Yeah. Well, that's where I get where she finds that power that's always been within her, right? Like, uh, that's the standing up to her dad that unlocks that, you know? But I just wish that I understood that better. Uh, and like you said, what what did it? Was it always there? Did she unlock it? Did she free that from him in this realm uh, or, or whatnot? So, so yeah. I just... Yeah. I, I, I really think there's several pages here that or a lot of big, colorful, wacky art pages of, like, mm-hmm. Zatanna and the stranger fighting, like, magical things uh-huh. that could have been spent actually, you know, fleshing out and explaining what the core dispute was mm-hmm. here and why Zatara did what he did and yeah. what Zatara is, is, or what Zatanna is realizing about herself in the process. Um, I just, yeah, I'm, I'm actually really dissatisfied yeah. with this, this final yeah. issue. Uh, I do like how she calls them the bunnies, right? Because the bunnies have been there from the beginning and they were kind of a, a key to something was was up with her in the very beginning. So the fact that they come in, she calls them down, almost like a summon in a video game, I thought mm-hmm. was pretty fun. And then that they're, you know, she's working with the bunny girl, it seems, at the end, right? Because um, it looks like they've taken over the conjurer's realm and all the bunnies are there. So, you know, it feels like there's more there. Again, I'm still not clear what, the bunny is like is she does she represent a different form of magic is that why where where are the conjurers because the conjurers seem to be gone now you know so what happened there um yeah there's a lot of questions here that you shouldn't have in the last issue yeah i I just don't think it came together all that well and uh i think it's easily my least favorite tamaki thing now like i think the ending of it is kind of you know, not, I wouldn't say soured me, but it, it does make me look at the whole yeah. book and go, oh, it wasn't satisfying. It didn't really feel like it yeah. came together in the end. Uh, the the final couple of pages is like, oh, there's two people here to see her, and you think, oh, is it two two, you know, witches or whatever coming to, like, con- you know, confront her? But the reveal is that it's actually Wonder Woman and Batman who are here to sort of reoffer to join the Justice League. And she's like, you know what? Maybe, maybe I'm ready for that. And that's kind of the ending, which is a is a fine couple of final pages. I just don't think I like the conclusion to the main story. No, but like this whole thing has been the build up to her getting this super magic back. So why has she been a part of the Justice League if she was just a stage magician? Well, she hasn't, but she's been offered. Right, but why? If she's just a stage magician, as she keeps saying, why would the Justice League want her if she's not this sorcerer like Constantine? You know what I mean? Yeah, well, I don't know if she's been offered. Or maybe I misspoke there. All Wonder yeah. Woman says is, are you finally ready to have a conversation about the Justice League? But the implication is, though, is that she's ready now because mm-hmm. she's went through this story, which would suggest right. that she already had an offer before. Um, right. I don't know. It's, yeah, it's which, kinda... again, doesn't make sense because at the start, it's just like, I don't do magic, I do tricks. And that's not somebody to me that works with the Justice League. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. Yeah. Uh, I mean, you could argue Batman knew her, so he knew the potential in her. But th- I mean, this book is not established that she had a relationship with no. Bruce Wayne, right? That's no. that's something I'm bringing in from the rest of comics. Yeah. So, because right. the Constantine stuff is very clear, you know, he gave her the top hat to protect her from anything like this happening. Yeah. So, you know, it's just it is a bummer. I got through this, and I'm, I thought I was missing something, and I thought, okay, I'll talk about it with Pete, and maybe something will become more clear. But the fact that we're we're seeming to line up along the same points. Yeah, I, I was just ver- kind of a failure of, of storytelling. Yeah, I was very lukewarm at the end of this. I didn't really feel mm-hmm. like I got a, a, a proper final chapter. So, yeah. yeah. Uh, it's so funny, though, because the, the backup in action right now, like, Tamaki's killing that, and, you know, yeah. I, I've loved uh, other things she's written. If, but this is just... Yeah, if this is the first stumble that we have by Tamaki, I think that's still okay. Yeah, you yeah, know? yeah. Whatever. One stumble's not a big deal, but it definitely yeah. feels like that's what it is at this point. Yeah. Uh, yeah, Joe. Sure. So, I mean, I was never liking this as much as being super, but I, I think I was expecting it to still resonate by the end, mm-hmm. and it never quite hit that, sadly, which is a shame. True. So The art, though, Fernandez, give me Fernandez on more things. Now, you know? Oh, sure, I, yeah. I love, I, yeah, I can't fault the Beast art. Book? Yeah, I, I think would be a lot of fun, you know? Give me Beast Boy and Raven doing some spooky stuff, and, you know, 
he can he can draw all sorts of realms of hell with with car and that vibrant green I'm like, yeah let's go yeah, yeah. So, I, I can't fault the art at all so mm-hmm. yeah that's cool um all right what are you giving zatanna bring down the house? i'm gonna do this a six you know that's i was actually also thinking about a six. <gasps> Ooh, look at that see I wasn't expecting you to go that low. I, I thought yeah. I thought you were going to think I was being especially low with that. But no, yeah, six out of no, because I again, thinking. I thought I might have been missing something until we started talking. And again, it, it wasn't the they weren't different things that we had problems with. They were no, about no, the same. Yeah, uh, so. they're just it's pretty and it kind of ends the story, but it feels empty. Mm-hmm. And I feel yeah. empty at the end of it because of it. <laughs>